Released in July 2019, the Raspberry Pi 4 represents a fantastic upgrade of the flagship Raspberry Pi. With faster processors, upgraded ports and more memory, the new Pi sounds like a slice of heaven. Is the Raspberry Pi the desktop replacement we've all been waiting for? Watch our review to find out. As you probably already know, the Raspberry Pi 4 is the most recent iteration of the British-made credit card size computer, replacing the Raspberry Pi 3 at the top of the line. It has a faster CPU, upgraded gigabit Ethernet and USB 3 ports, and for the first time features a new USB-C connector for the power port. The new board also has two HDMI display ports, which can go up to 4K resolution on two screens simultaneously, and USB 3. It's been reworked from the ground up to provide a lot more performance. What did they get right? The biggest bonus is the System on Chip, or SOC, has been rewritten from scratch, so it benefits from both faster clock speeds and from more efficient processing. One thing you find out running benchmarks on the Raspberry Pi 4 is that A, there are way too many benchmarking standards, and B, benchmarks are a moving target. It depends on how many cores you're using, the ambient temperature around the board, and whether the benchmark uses single or double precision, or taps into the Neon instructions present in the RPi2 and above. All of them get different results, and it's hard to pick one that's both representative and comprehensible. You will also get different results if you're using any cooling technology. The processor on the Raspberry Pi 4 gets very hot. I strongly recommend fitting a heatsink to the processor because running hot, especially inside a case, impacts performance negatively. As it's touted as a desktop replacement, I'm more interested to see if I can get a feel for how the Raspberry Pi 4 stacks up with desktop computers. So the test I'm using, Speedometer 2, is not super technical but runs on anything with a browser and is a crude but effective test of not only CPU performance but memory speed and capacity. On Speedometer 2, the Raspberry Pi 2 scored 5 runs a minute and the Raspberry Pi 3 scored 9.1 runs a minute. A gaming Intel i5 3.2 GHz Linux desktop running Ubuntu scored a hefty 50.1 runs per minute. The Mac Mini late 2012 i5 2.5 GHz gives a score of 39.8 runs per minute. And my inexpensive Lenovo IdeaPad laptop AMD A5 2.2 GHz scored 20.8 runs per minute. Admittedly, the laptop is not new, but it's a capable Windows 10 machine, if a little bit slow. It serves me well as a machine to write on, watch YouTube, listen to music and surf the web, and is exactly the kind of machine normal people use every day. So, where does the Raspberry Pi come into this list? The 2GB Raspberry Pi score was an impressive 18 runs a minute. Considering how bad the RPi 2 and 3 scores were compared to the real desktops, that's actually quite good. The Raspberry Pi 4 is not only faster than the Raspberry Pi 3, it's a lot faster and getting up there into low-end laptop territory. If I had a heatsink on the RPi 4 and the 4GB memory version, it might even reach or surpass the laptop. It's a similar story with USB throughput. Pi 2 and 3 scored around 30 to 35 megabytes per second, whereas the Pi 4 scored between 320 and 360 megabytes per second. Those USB 3 ports really paid off. The gigabit Ethernet performance is also impressive. Ethernet performance used to be in the 90 megabytes per second zone on the Pi 2. The Pi 3B added gigabit Ethernet, but it was restricted or throttled to around 230 megabits per second. The Pi 4's score is 940 megabits per second. These numbers add up to the biggest performance jump in Raspberry Pi history. I know what you're thinking. What about gaming? A quick and dirty test with Open Arena reveals that while both Pi 2 and Pi 3 get about 27-28 frames per second. The Pi 4 clocks in around 40 frames a second. Hmm, impressive. But for me, the acid test of any Raspberry Pi gaming setup is, of course, RetroPie, running some of the more graphics-intensive simulations like Sony PSX and Nintendo N64. Now, if only we could see those running smoothly, because, as you know, they run incredibly slowly on most Raspberry Pi emulations. This, however, brings us to a problem. What's wrong with it? Okay, so now the cons. What about the performance on RetroPie? The answer is you can't do that yet. 
at the time of writing, and version 4.5 of Retropy, it's only compiled for the Pi 0, 1, 2 or 3. This is a problem with lots of mainstream Pi software, in that for the next little while, you'll have to wait for developers to catch up with the new hardware and software, like the new operating system Buster. Software bundled with the Raspbian Buster distro, like LibreOffice, of course, totally flies on the Pi 4, and of course anything else included with the OS will run absolutely perfectly. And of course this gap will resolve itself shortly. On release it also emerged that there's a small hardware glitch in the USB-C implementation, which meant that eMarked cables, like the one you repurposed from your Mac or phone, read the Raspberry Pi 4 as an audio device, and so didn't provide enough power. This will also be fixed in subsequent revisions. The bug is easily circumvented though by using an official Raspberry Pi power supply like I did. On the display side, while you can use two HDMI screens with the RPi4, there is apparently a limitation. If you have one screen, you can do 4K at 60 frames per second. However, if you have two screens attached, this drops to 30 frames per second for each screen. There has to be compromises with the Pi, so this is obviously to be expected. If your dream was to run Open Arena on two screens, it's not going to be as smooth as you hoped. Another small issue is they switched the positions of the USB and Ethernet ports. I'm sure there was a sound technical reason for this, something to do with the new upgraded USB 3 or full gigabit Ethernet ports perhaps, but whatever the rationale, this plus the new power and twin HDMI ports means all the previous cases for the Pi will no longer fit. I suppose the thinking was this is an all new machine and as such requires all new accessories. But this is the biggest shake up of the platform since the Pi 2 so I suppose you can expect it to wipe away all that went before. And I'll say it again, it runs very hot. I actually burned my finger on it. So get a heat sink, just do it. Conclusion. The Raspberry Pi 4 is a very powerful little single board computer, which is almost as fast as a low end Windows laptop. And while true workstation status is a way off yet, it's definitely a usable everyday computer now. Obviously expecting the same performance as a fully loaded Linux gaming machine is ludicrous, but for the price and for the tiny size, you have something that works and works well for day to day tasks. The addition of the USB 3 ports now makes it not only possible, but desirable to run external disks at something approaching usable speeds, which also enhances its usability as an everyday computer. With this in mind, it could also find a use as the brains of a NAS or media server when attached to a large capacity external drive. OK, I give the Raspberry Pi 4 a rating of 8 out of 10. Here are the pros. Impressive performance for its size and price, biggest performance spike ever. New twin HDMI screens, 4K display support, fast USB 3 and gigabit Ethernet. And here are the cons. Runs quite hot, so you need a heatsink to get the best out of its performance. Until USB-C bug is fixed, you may need to buy an official power supply. Two screens run at 30 frames per second maximum. Some mainstream software is not yet ported to Pi 4 at the time of writing. The price of the base level unit with 1GB of RAM is $35, with 2GB and 4GB varieties being $45 and $55 respectively. As usual, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below in the comment section. Okay, as always, thanks for watching. That's all for